Hi everybody, I thought I'd give you a little update on my cold weather koi pond. Some of you may know already that I have a series on uh, running a koi pond in a cold climate like uh, I have here in northern Alberta. I'll put the links to those other videos down in the description and if uh, you could subscribe as well, as well that would be great. It could really uh, help me out. Now today it's minus 30 and it, we've been in a cold snap of like minus 30 to minus 40. It's uh, crazy cold. So this is a, a great uh, example to and proof to to show that you can keep koi alive in a really really cold environment. But some people have asked some questions in the in the other uh, videos uh, in the comments and uh, just a couple of really good questions and I'd like to uh, address those right now. So uh, let's go ahead and do that. So the, the first question is, uh, the, somebody wanted to know the real specifics of heating the pond. You, you can't leave a pond uh, unheated in a, uh, in a cold, in an extreme cold weather in an environment like this. So what I've got, and it's kind of hard to see it right here, and I'll, I'll put a little, uh, edit a screenshot here of what exactly this heater is. It's a, it's a plain old $30 trough heater. Um, and that is what provides the, the majority of the, the heat. Right now it's an extreme cold snap. So what I've got is an extra uh, little 200 watt heater that I have in, in the water. And both of those currently are running uh, 24 hours a day. So um, do you uh, need to run these heaters 24 hours a day all winter? And the answer to that is no. Uh, what I do is I put the, uh, the heaters on a, on a timer here and the uh, timer is uh, just, I run it on, um, on uh, light. So it's one of those solar sensitive timers. So when uh, the uh, sun goes down, uh, the power goes on. Uh, right now I have it set to manual on for uh, 24 hours a day, uh, just because uh, it's just too cold. And if you only run it for uh, the, the night hours, uh, it will not keep up and the water will get too cold and will start to freeze up. And that's basically the thing you wanna watch out for is if you notice the uh, ice start forming on the surface of the water, that means that it's, it's just too cold and you got to increase your amount of heat. Um, another rough guide to temperature is, is about minus 15. If it's warmer than minus 15 degrees Celsius, that means you can probably get away with just heating it at night. But if it gets colder than minus 15, that means uh, you really should think about running your heater um, uh, 24 hours a day. Uh, the other question that someone asked is, what's the cost of that heating? Well, that's just basic math. And of course it's dependent on how long you're running your heater. So for instance, right now I've got a 1500 watt um, trough heater and another uh, extra 200 watt heater. So just doing the rough math there, that's 1700 watts. That's 1.7 kilowatts. And if I'm running that for 24 hours, a day, uh, that's roughly about 40 kilowatt hours. So now it's dependent on your um, your cost of electricity. So let's say your cost of electricity is uh, 10 cents per kilowatt hour. That would mean um, you're looking at about four dollars a day. So it's you know it can get a little bit expensive if you're running your heaters uh, all day long, but you know, more, most of the time you're only running them for about a half a day. And then of course that's, you know, only for the, the coldest of the, uh, of the winter months. Uh, and the last question I want to address in this uh, short video is what about the fish? Like, uh, how do they, uh, tolerate the, the cold? And as you can see, my, my fish are tolerating the cold just fine. Now this, this is not their normal amount of activity. They, they get very slow and very sluggish because really 
those heaters are just taking the edge off and um, the temperature of the water is still extremely cold, probably just above zero. And Koi can handle that. Uh, it could probably handle being frozen under the ice um, for a while, just fine. But, um, uh, you know, as long as you can see them active, strangely enough, uh, you'll see sometimes they'll go into a real torpor. Like this fish right here, right, you can see is barely moving and I'll have to poke him once in a while <laughs> to, to check if he's still alive, but sure enough he is. And uh, they just go into that, that kind of a trance-like state. And they do so more uh, as a larger koi. The smaller koi tend to stay more active. I'm not sure why that is, but the, the larger they get, the more sensitive to the, to the cold they get and the more likely they are to go into these trance-like torpors. Uh, so, um, uh, one last question to squeeze in. Somebody asked about feeding in the, uh, in the winter time and what you want to do is barely feed your fish. So, you know, a, a group of 10 koi like this, you know, foot long koi could eat a good handful of food, uh, on a summer day, every day. Um, but in the winter, I might give these guys a teaspoon of food every second day they do not need much food and it's it's really not a great idea to overfeed them uh, in the winter time uh, they really don't need it because their metabolism slows to such a great extent that they just don't need as much food okay i hope you enjoyed that little bit of discussion of uh, uh koi pond maintenance in extremely cold conditions uh if i miss something if you have more questions please include them in the comments and I'll be uh, happy to tackle them. Take care, stay warm. <laughs>